Hi, this is Mike with the second tutorial in a four part series about counting. Here I have a list of tutorials on the Excel Trainer website and I'd like to know how many tutorials I have. Now in the previous video I showed you how to use the count a function and the problem with that function is that it doesn't update as the number of rows updates. So as I add a new tutorial, what I would do is insert a new row at row three, because I always want the newest tutorial to be at the top. I then put the name of the tutorial in here. And I would want it to update the result to show me that new tutorial. And as I said, the count a function won't do that. If you're not familiar with the count a function, go and have a look at the first tutorial in this little series. To help solve this problem, what I'm going to do is convert this range, which goes from uh, A2 to D81, I'm going to convert this to a table. To do that in this particular version of Excel, and this is Excel 2013, I go to the Insert tab. Well, I first of all make sure that my cursor is somewhere within the range that I want to uh, convert, and then go to Insert and choose table. And what it does is it looks at where my cursor is, it looks at all the cells that surround my cursor, and it works out what it thinks is the range that I want to use. And it's, it's selected A2 to D81, which is correct. If for some reason that was incorrect, I can just go and edit this create table box here. My table does have headers because I want it to treat the data on row two as headings. So I click on OK. And what it's done is it's converted that range to a table. Now in Excel, a table is simply a block of data that's treated as an independent unit. I'm not going to discuss all the benefits of a table here, but you can see that as soon as I create the table, what Excel does is it formats it. Uh, by making the headings darker and then every alternate row is uh, shaded in a different shade, a different colour. And it also adds filter drop down arrows to the title row. Row one is still blank. Now, if I do want to change the style, I've got all these styles here that I can choose. So if I wanted a different colour scheme, I can. I can choose a different colour scheme. Let's, let's go for Excel green. I can turn off the filter arrows if I want to. And I can also rename the table. Every table is given a name. And this table was given the name table two. Now that's because there was at some point in this file a table one. So I'm going to rename this table and I'm going to call it tutorials. So any time my cursor is in any cell in this table, it will give me the name of the table up here as long as I'm on the design tab. If I move outside the table, the design tab disappears. I'm going to put into A1 a formula that will tell me how many rows are in this table because that equates to how many tutorials I have. Now, as I said, my tutorials go down from row three to row 81. Start off with an equal sign and I'm going to use the function rows, which counts the number of rows within a given reference or array, which is basically a range or a block. But instead of specifying a range, I'm just going to specify the name of the table. Tutorials, close brackets and enter. And it comes up with 79, which is the correct answer. Now, let's go and insert a row at row three. And now it shows me 80. That's the only downside in that it's counting the number of rows in the table, not counting the number of cells that have something in. But I'm going to assume that every row 
because it's to do with a tutorial, I don't want any blank cells in there. So my new tutorial. I'm going to change that. So instead of it just saying 80, it says 80 tutorials. And to do that, I will click up in the formula bar, type in ampersand to, because I want to combine elements together. Type in a speech mark or quote mark, whatever you want to call it, space, and then the word tutorials. Now it moves it to the left because it is text, it's no longer a number, but you can see what it's doing. It's saying, tell me how many rows there are in the table called tutorials and join that to the word tutorials. I've been careful to make sure there's a space after the opening speech mark, but before the T and that's what gives me the space character there between the 80 and the tutorials. I'll scroll down to the bottom of this table and scroll across. And because this is a table, I get a little marker, the bottom right hand corner of the bottom cell. And so I hover my mouse over it, mouse pointer becomes a double headed arrow. And then I can just drag my mouse down and I'll extend this table over two additional rows. So the table now goes to row 84. Let's move back to the top. Move back to column A and we've now got 82 tutorials. Of course, there aren't 82 tutorials, but there are 82 rows in this table. So now I know how many tutorials I have and whenever I add another one, the formula updates. What I want to do now is count how many videos I have. As you can see, not every tutorial includes a video, but I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial.